I have in the past sold business opportunity products and I loved it. And I do think that if I think that the school system's a hustle, it's designed to put you in debt. 80% of those folks come out without the necessary means to get a job. I mean, I love it for people who are doctors, lawyers, you know, and they're going for a specific result, but I think most people are getting hustled and and it's an excuse to avoid taking responsibility for your life for another four years, right? Like I came out of call. I came out of the time I didn't go to college, but my friends did, and they came out a hundred grand in debt, and I had a hundred thousand dollar a year business, right? So uh, I was out there living in the real world, and I think that um, that it's the I mean it's the number three um, the number three industry in in North America is digital marketing, right? Like the the, the opportunity is endless here, and I think people. Welcome to a very special episode of The Robust Marketer. Uh, we have a personal hero and friend of mine on the show. We have Ezra Firestone. Uh, Ezra is just a, a megalithic marketer. Uh, he is fulfilling the true holy trinity of, uh, of modern marketing. He's got an incredible e-commerce business going. He's built an amazing brand with Cindy Joseph at Boom. He's building an info product line with Smart Marketer, and he's completing the holy trifecta with uh, a software as, as a service, service business with uh, Zipify and some other cool things he's doing. Welcome to the Robust Marketer. How you doing, Ezra? The Holy Trinity. I think that's, that's what a, it is. That is a deep, that's a statement. Yeah. Um, thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, wh- how would you def- define the word robust? Okay, so this is funny. This is when I was, uh, when I was first kind of branding, I was trying to figure out what, because when I took over this job, we were doing one course. It was called the Six Week Affiliate Mastery Challenge. And I was like, okay, I want to call it something else. And I was trying to come up with words that, that, I, that I thought were good. So, so I looked up the opposite of missing, or I looked up um, what it meant to hit the mark. What it meant to hit the mark. And that it was a, a, a Greek or Latin word called hamartia. And hamartia, you're in for it now, we're going deep. Hamartia means to miss the mark. Hamartia means when you sort of like miss the mark in life. And then I was looking up opposite of Hamartia. And one of the things that people do to, to, to uh, ward off Hamartia or missing the mark is they become robust. Uh, so they become uh, multifaceted. They become resilient. And so that's where robust came from. And originally I was looking at like even calling the training thing robust, but it's like it has the word bust in it. So maybe not all marketers are thrilled with it. But I, want I to be- am a adv- avid user of the word robust and to the point where my team teases me about how often I use robust as a word to describe things. So um, I'm all about the robust marketer. I think it's awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, it, it, it helps that I'm a, like a – I'm just a, curious. A like, where did you come, like, ro- it's, it's not a common – I mean I suppose it is common, but it's not commonly used to describe – successful marketing i mean people don't think sit there and say that marketing sure is robust <laughs> doesn't happen ever i know you're the I know. first person to ever label marketing as robust ever in the history i've been online i, I did well, just throw a ping pong ball on the ground but um on accident uh, i've been online I, for a long time now i've never heard it does it work for you it does yeah the robust marketer uh robust is a mouthful you know robust i know um but then again digital digital marketer, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. They're, they're, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. Anyways, that's not what we came here to talk about. I apologize. I derailed no. us to the origin of robust, which I don't know if anyone besides me is interested in. I, I'm super glad to, and I decided I wanted to go off the rails because I because I haven't gone off the rails. We'll do, we'll, in Barcelona, we'll, we'll hopefully go off the rails a little bit uh, and, and have some fun, but uh, but but uh, yeah, I, I, I listened to a couple of your other interviews, and you're a, you're a wide-ranging individual. I'm robust. Uh, you are very robust. You're spiritually robust, and I want to get into that a little bit as well. But let's start uh, with your marketer hero's journey. Your your hero's journey. That what what brought you here? Um, meaning, like, why did I become an entrepreneur? Just sort of like the, the uh, uh, an, in a nutshell story of how you became who you are today in terms of marketing specifically. Um, yeah. So you know, I've always had some kind of hustle. I was the guy who sold jelly beans. I could. Uh, I had things for sale in high school. Uh, you know, I could get you favorable mentions with, t- I, I like was always selling something. I had a car wash business and I was sort of a perpetual entrepreneur. I was, I grew up at the flea market selling things. So commerce has always been, um, a part of my life and, the flea market. 
What's that? Love the flea market. My mom bought me laser tag, and all my friends went there, bought us laser tag one time, and I will. And then I went back. I bought a leather braided whip there that I whipped the shit out of my Whoa. brother with, which was a bad Whoa. idea. But right anyway, on. love the flea market. Yeah, flea, flea market's a, kind of one of these underworlds. It's a sub. It's a. Um, it's a subculture that sits, you know, on top of or beneath mass culture and you know just like internet marketing and affiliate marketing and e-commerce is this little sub small tiny group of people who are very tight-knit who have a specific way of being and doing things i mean the flea market was very much that and it was very much centered around commerce obviously different people from who had wares from every walk of life uh especially back in the day flea markets today tend to be mass market uh chinese produced stuff and a lot of them now they've sort of lost their um, you know, they're, they've sort of lost something from what they were when I was a kid. Uh, but some, some places still have this kind of like ramshackle, uh, flea market style. Uh, but anyways, long story short is I was a failed, uh, normal person. So I, I never did well. At, I had like a couple jobs that I always failed at. Um, I, uh, was a, you know, playing poker for a living in New York city. And I met a guy who, um, uh, that's a, lot, a whole other story. Uh, when I was 19 and he was one of the first people in the life coaching space. So, you know, coaching is now mainstream, uh, business coaches, relationship coaches, health coaches, everyone's a coach. This was not the case 10 years ago. Coaching had not penetrated the mainstream. It was like, uh, like yoga is another example of something in the last 15 years that has gone mainstream. That was once fringe coaching was once fringe. And this guy, uh, back in the early two thousands had a business opportunity information product. Okay. What you sell in a way, what I sell, I have sold in the past business opportunity information products. He had this, uh, for how to become a life coach because coaching has no governing body. Some would argue that's good. Some would argue that's bad, but it has no governing, governing body. Any schmo off the street can call themselves a coach and start charging people for services. Um, and uh, it's both good and bad, frankly. Um, so what he did was he leveraged the visibility source of the day, which was search engine optimization, and he ranked for keywords like how to make money online, and he sold uh, information product on how to start a life coaching business. And he was one of the first in that industry and uh, you know, helped popularize it and had probably the biggest following of life coaches in the world for several years there. And uh, he became a buddy of mine. I taught him how to play poker. He taught me search engine optimization. I ended up taking over his business and sort of cutting my teeth um, on in internet marketing and in, you know the early 2000s doing that and long story short here i am today doing internet marketing but now in e-commerce and you've dabbled all along the way i remember when we first met you had discussed that you had probably even had an account at the first affiliate network that i was at at never blue i've done everything man i've done every model i've done uh services uh consulting um you know running an agency which is kind of those two things combined yeah. uh information publishing software as a service affiliate marketing cpa marketing e-commerce i've really you know i've been in this industry now for 14 years ish 13 14 years and you know in that time frame for our industry is a lifetime so many different models have come and gone amazon i still do amazon you know uh so many different sources of visibility and monetization methods have um, come into and out of popularity. Ebooks, right? I had a lot of successful ebooks. Uh, you know, the whole it's wigs? events. What's that? Wigs? Yeah, I sold wigs. I was you the number sold? one retailer of wigs, uh, costume wigs and mullet wigs for a while there in America. Um, but my point is that fundamentally, I mean, it's all the same thing. We are generating visibility uh, in some way uh, back in the day it was seo today it's we're paying we're going to the traffic store and buying visibility on facebook instagram pinterest you know whatever youtube uh, google display network and we're sending that visibility to a piece of content or a sales video or an opt-in or a webinar whatever we have some sales cycle that ultimately results in us attempting to get a prospect who was hanging out on the internet to give us their money for a service or product we have and uh I really like that whole thing, every part of it. I like the creation of products. I like the getting people's attention. I like the telling stories. I like the getting money. I mean, I just like it all. And uh, that's why I think I'm still at it, you know? That's that's super interesting. And, and and you learn a little little bits of it from each part along the journey. Like in affiliate marketing, you're not going to learn how to nurture a customer. You're not going to no. learn how to re – but you, you will get good learn at how to traffic. get their attention right away. You're, you're good at grabbing them, getting them onto your page, which Absolutely. is a skill that, that, that's really valuable. For sure. For sure. Um, so I, I, like, you... uh, I think affiliate marketers are better advertisers than they realize. 
most of the time, you know. Um, and they, if they got- just yeah, if they just open their mind a little bit more to, to the longer tail, and I think they are. I've talked to a bunch recently because STM is really tied in with uh, with affiliate marketing still, and I've talked to a lot of them are, that are really sort of taking a more holistic approach to once you have a someone, don't just toss them aside, don't burn them, and, and try to reach them like you know nurture them and, and build them you know make them want other things that you have to offer. I mean, listen, we're in the attention business, right? At the end of the day, that is the whole business is get a whole bunch of people to pay attention to you. I mean, you see all these, take a look at, uh, in our space, the, um, biggest influencers, you know, uh, and I want to go a level above affiliate marketing or e-commerce and let's just go to self-help as it relates to, as it ties back to wealth creation. I mean, look at the guys from the secret, look at your Ty Lopez's, your Lewis houses, your, Gary, well, not really Gary Vee, but like, um, you know, Bob Proctor, look at any of these people who have essentially mass, and I just named a bunch of dudes, but, um, there's women too. Suze Ormond. Ma- What's that? Suze Ormond. Suze Ormond. Yeah. Su- these yeah. mass market, um, sort of giant audiences at the end of the day, most of these people are monetizing those audiences with business opportunity offers, even the self-help people, like even back in the day, all the self-help people would promote our life coaching product because it was a, it was a wealth creation opportunity. Uh, and at the end of the day, when people are looking to better themselves, they're also looking to better their financial situation. But my, my point here was not to do with that particular model of generate a mass audience and then monetize it through, uh, opportunity based offers. But what it was, was that people and brands who have audiences who follow them over time are the most successful. That is what it's about building an audience who wants to pay attention to you. Facebook is in the attention business. They want to keep people paying attention on Facebook, right? We're in the audience. Someone did, uh, Seth Godin popularized this, but it wasn't his concept. Someone else has been talking about this for a long time, this uh, attention marketing. The Purple Cow. I I read, uh, I read Seth Godin's book there. And that's, I'm reading, uh, I've just read uh, Russell Brunson's book, of course, about the attractive character, Uh, uh, you know, uh, how important that is. He just did a podcast. Russell's another one, right? Mass yeah. market audience framed around a, a, an opportunity. I mean, it's a. I'm just pulling examples from our industry, but like I'm, a, I've got a mass market audience framed around uh, the idea that aging can be pleasurable. Like it's the same structure, same thing. You know, it's just like well, we're building an audience around a particular space and then nurturing that audience over time through content and things that add value to their life, and then ultimately having opportunities for them to do business with us, which is our products and services and things. And getting it to the point where you've provided so much value. Uh, that it's a no brainer for them to want to work with you. And, and you've already, and you can launch brands. I mean, you see these influencers, they launch brands all the time because people follow them. They like them. And then they're like, Oh, you say this thing is good. I'm in. Totally. And it's associated with you, which I'm obviously as a brand I'm, I'm into. So talk about your goals for a little bit for a sec, because you, you know, you've got this trifecta of, of marketing going on. Are you, you're hoping to reach, and I know that you're, you're now promoting posts as well about, wellness and about about relationships i really uh and it, my wife is also named carrie so I, whenever, every time you make a post about carrie i'm like oh i should have done that oh that's a smart way to be but talk a little bit about about that pivot into into that that next realm of, of helping people um, essentially i'm i mean you mean like my desire for my own influencer brand yeah yeah okay so i mean i so my desire in business in general i i see um like a lot of people are after wealth creation as a means of personal validation. That means they are successful and they've made it and they're valid and they can show that off. And like, this is just a description of of a lot of people chasing success. It's for their own ego validation. I have a desire and that's, there's nothing wrong with that right on. That is not my um, agenda. My agenda is to generate massive amounts of resource because I can then use that resource to direct towards causes that I find noble, like, you know, saving the rainforest or supporting my local community or giving my wife anything she wants, whatever, you know what I mean? And, um, I've figured out that, uh, I've figured out something that a lot of people struggle with, which is wealth creation, how to build online businesses that are successful, that generate resource that I can then deploy into different areas of my life. And so when I look at the different models available, I told you I've tried every model e-commerce at scale, and I'm going to label a business at scale as a year in revenue. You got some employees, you got some things that are happening consistently. I mean, it's kind of like scale, right? So, and I am now shooting for eight figure businesses. I'll explain that in a minute. But when I look at uh, business models at scale, e-commerce is far and away the best one. It it takes up the least amount of your life. It's the easiest to systematize. Uh, Supply chain at scale is the easiest. Customer support at scale is the easiest. The the trick is the marketing, right? Software 
customer service cult because your customer service agents need to know everything that you've added to the app. You're constantly changing the app so the product isn't static. So supply chain, i.e. development of product is real hard. So it is a nightmare at scale. Uh, you know, educational courses are real tough at scale because you got to update them once a year and um, the support's hard because it's nuanced. You know, e-commerce, it's like, What's in the product? What isn't? I want a refund. I want to order. I mean, that's support. Scales real easy. Supply chain is more tubs, more goo, more labels. You know, you, I'm selling two in a, goo in a tub here. You know, it's like things are easy at scale. And uh, marketing is the real trick there. And I'm really good at that. So for me, that's the best model to scale. And then so I'm working on those businesses. You know, I have one business does about 20 million a year. Another business does a couple million. And I'm working towards eight figure. Uh, I no longer look and say, what's the easiest niche to get into, which I used to when I was had no money, was super broke, was working a 70 hour a week job, trying to build my e-commerce business at night. I was like, what is the easiest way to make a couple grand a month? And I would go into these little niches, you know, costume wigs was a little niche. It ended up being a big business, but it started out as like, man, I could make, uh, just selling Elvis wigs. I could make 500 bucks a month and I'm stoked at $500 a month at that time in my career, you know? And, and then Elvis wigs became a number of things. But, um, so now when I look at an e-commerce brand, I'm looking at an offer a physical product that is going to be relevant to a age range and a gender because that gives me a very wide opportunity. I want a brand that can scale to a hundred million dollars and you're never going to get a brand that can scale to a hundred million in value, which is 20 to 30 million in revenue with a couple 5 million in profit. I mean, you could have a valuation as high as a hundred million in certain markets. My brand now probably has a valuation definitely in the tens of millions, you know? Um, so when you look at that's the goal, because that is a large amount of resource to generate that I can then deploy once I liquidate that asset. And wealth comes from asset liquidation. It doesn't come from cash flow businesses. People are confused about this. Cash flow businesses are wonderful, but they don't generate wealth. They generate cash flow that you can use unless you become Apple, right? Most of the time, real wealth is generated through the liquidation of assets that you that are, in my case, cash, cash flow businesses that I've, I've developed. Um, and so since that's my goal, um, and I want to do so uh, that that in a way that doesn't take over my life. I mean, you look at a lot of people who run these SaaS companies and things like that. They're shackled to their business. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in a lifestyle that supports me going and taking a bath in the middle of the day with my wife and not having to show up to an office. You know, I, I'm interested in creating uh, – if I'm going to go ahead and design this whole thing anyways, which I am, right? I'm an internet entrepreneur. I'm doing this myself. I might as well design the one that suited for me the best, which is – the, the, one, the one that <laughs> requires the least of me at scale, right, which is e-commerce. E-commerce just requires the marketing strategy. I got my customer support teams. I got my designers, my developers, my advertisers, my project managers, my copywriters, and then I just help with marketing, and then that's that, you know, and, like, my teams can really run these businesses without a ton of my uh, everyday oversight, you know. Uh, boom, as a business, I go away for a month. It stays the same. I leave Smart Marketer for a month, Zipify for a month they drop because they're very uh, intensive with me working on them. So um, if I'm going to go into a new e-commerce market, it's going to be um, for where I'm at in my career, an offer that's relevant to a particular age range and a particular gender, men 20 to 40. I want this offer to be relevant to them. Razors. Perfect example. That is a mass market offer. Toothbrushes. You know, that's how, you know, I, I did this. Uh, I do these blog posts called uh, buying stuff and talking about it. Also known as how they do where I uh, buy things and then I break down their marketing. I, I did one, one on, uh, shoes. I did one on all birds. Yeah. All birds is so genius Great because shoes. they're relevant to every age range and every gender. That's the beauty of apparel in that way, yeah. particularly shoes. Like their shoes are not men's or women's. They're everyone genius toothbrushes. Same thing. Like I am interested in those categories that are mass market because I have the skill set. man. How is it that some random dude off his couch in Brooklyn went out there and, and has now engaged with every woman on Facebook in America over 50 with content. It should, it's like we just live in a time where that's possible. I, I, I've had 50 million video views in the last two years of an offer that's geared towards women over 50. So anyone can do this if you get good at paid amplification, storytelling, conversion rate optimization, sales funnels, right? And so when I'm getting into new markets today, I'm, I'm looking for um, the, the widest possible market. And I think that's only smart uh, once you're an advanced marketer, because uh, if you're not, you're going to want to play in more niche areas that are uh, uh, easier to compete in, you know. Um, so that doesn't answer your question about my influencer brand. But to answer your question about my influencer brand, I think it goes back to uh, like I'm well known for e-commerce, right? People know me for e-commerce conversion rate optimization, e-commerce advertising. Like I am the e-commerce guy uh, because I was probably the first person or one of them out there 
talking about e-commerce um, as a public figure, as a blogger, as a speaker, as a presenter, as a person who taught courses, uh, happened to get into this space early because I was one. I you know started in e-commerce many many years ago. Uh, and I started talking about it because blogging was popular and I thought I had some fun stuff to say, but what I'm passionate about, I'm passionate about that. I love that. Uh, and I think as described earlier, the bigger your audience, the more, uh, power you wield in terms of, uh, directing that audience towards different brands, um, directing that audience towards, uh, different things. And like, so people with big audiences you know, by description wield more power because they can direct, if that audience likes them, knows them, trusts them, they can direct that audience towards uh, causes, products, et cetera. And so for me, you know, I have a lot to say about uh, how to be a good man and uh, how to be good in relationship and uh, what it means to be a successful entrepreneur. And like, I just have all these things that uh, I, that I think that um, I like to talk about. And it turns out people think that content is pretty cool, right? Self-help, self-improvement, mindset. This is a very popular content category. So for especially me, it's- Especially among natural... entrepreneurs. What's that? Especially among entrepreneurs, I think. Totally. Especially among the people, it fits really well. People are, 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 are trying to improve themselves via these transformative methods of e-commerce and all this stuff. So it's all, so it fits that, that you put attention on, on your personal life as well. Yeah, and so it's a natural transition for me as someone who's interested in a wider audience. Uh, you'll now see me going on shows of, I would never do a show previously that wasn't e-commerce specific. It's like, why? This is not worth it. These people, I have nothing to talk to these people about. I'm only talking about e-commerce. Now you'll see me on more general, um, self-improvement business shows like Grant Cardone's, right? You were saying you saw that show. His, he's got 6 million people who follow him. Those are not all e-commerce people, but I want to talk to them because I feel like I have content that they might find interesting. Uh, and I want that uh, larger audience because then it, it makes my public figure brand more valuable, gives me uh, more resource, you know, and I think um, that's why I'm doing that. If you get, you're, more from invites, a strategy perspective. You get more invites to places like Barcelona there to, you go. to come and, and wow an audience. I wanted to go uh, I, I, quickly, though. Do you think so you're, you're about serving the world unselfishly and profiting? I think there's a part of what we're doing here, especially with this upcoming big launch that we're working on. Um, where where we really do feel like you know e-commerce e as an opportunity is something that can be obviously very transformative to a lot of people. Is that one of the reasons that you do what you do? Like, do you honestly believe that that you know bringing this this sort of opportunity to people to to master is something that can be very beneficial to their lives? You know, I don't offer any opportunity based products. The only no. things I sell Skills are education. Based, so, well, education. So if you have yeah. a, if you have a business, I help you grow it basically. Um, I have in the past sold business opportunity products and I loved it. And I do think that if I think that the school system's a hustle, it's designed to put you in debt. 80% of those folks come out without the necessary means to get a job. I mean, I love it for people who are doctors, lawyers, you know, and they're going for a specific result, but I think most people are getting hustled and the, and it's an excuse to avoid taking responsibility for your life for another four years, right? Like, I came out of call. I came out of the time. I didn't go to college, but my friends did, and they came out a hundred grand in debt, and I had a hundred thousand dollar a year business, right? So yeah. uh, I was out there living in the real world, and I think that um, that it's the. I mean, it's the number three, um, the number three industry in in North America is digital marketing, right? Like the, the the opportunity is endless here, and I think people, especially people who are born with less, um, uh, you know. Classism is real, man. Institutional racism is real. Like people are born with less access to opportunity than other people, and I think for for uh, for those communities, for everyone, but those communities in particular, man, access to the internet, access to opportunity, it's such an amazing thing. I am a firm believer in the opportunity of e-commerce, of digital marketing, of uh, internet entrepreneurship. I mean, it, it is the story of my life. I was a, I identified as a poor person, grew up poor with not much, and. Uh, have now, you know, just by description, I'm no longer poor. I have make a lot of money and it's a, yeah. diff, you know, and it's, it's really cool. And I think that is available for everyone. And, um, I, I would probably recommend if you're going to start a business online today that it, if you're, I mean, look, you could do consulting, you could be the kind of person who wants to go out and get a career in digital, become a social media manager, an advertiser, a, a digital marketing coordinator, IE project manager. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity for career based paths, but if you're, if you're interested in running your own show, affiliate marketing, Amazon uh, based businesses or Shopify e-commerce businesses, I mean, what other better ways are there to get started online? There's really not. Those are really your three paths. I mean, there's some other sub ones, but like 
you know, you could become an influencer and sell digital products if you're that kind of person, but most people are not, you know? So if you're looking for an opportunity, it, is there. there is nothing better because the potential, the, the path is there. You got people like me and you and other folks saying, this is how we did it. There's no faster path to wealth creation, I think, for um, someone who's starting with not much. I agree. And you heard it here first, folks. Uh, but I understand, and, and we do the same thing with opportunity-based marketing. We're, you know, we're not uh, trying to get into that, that the business opportunity space. We, we always try to walk that line, really, because we recognize it's an opportunity, but we also recognize that it's- Nothing it, wrong it's, with BizOp. I do no, not want to vilify no. BizOp. I'm a big fan of And they help so many people, it. almost every person. You started because you met a guy you know, selling BizOps, and I'm sure you learned For a lot. For sure. Every, yeah, you know? I mean, I'm really pro-business opportunity. I think there's some shitty ones out there. Yeah. No, no offense, pardon my language, but I mean, dude, there just are. Uh, but there's some good ones too, you know? Totally. Let's talk about branding for a second here. So you talked about Boom. I think one of the really cool things you did with Boom, you created a brand, but you but there's a real identity behind that brand and something that's even a little, not subversive necessarily, but it's like it goes against the grain. Like to, and, and, and there's a real psychological a edge to I mean, it. Think about it is quip. a disruptive thing. Embrace you, your age, right? You have a uh, Quip toothbrush. You've seen those ads, the little yeah. super tech fancy. 85% of the electric toothbrushes in America are sold by Oral-B and Sonicare. They are a disruptor by design. And I'm a big fan of being a disruptor. And I'm also a big fan of meaning like it's a very buzzword. Everyone's talking about disrupt the industry. It's such a, it's one of these like up level, you know, it's where do these, everyone has adopted this. It was hustle a few years ago and then it was ninja. I mean, and then it was up level and now disrupt, but, um, which there's nothing wrong with that being the trend of words. That just is, uh, but I like brands that are built around personas. I like public figures. I like uh, having um, some some person who builds a relationship with a group of people and then um, recommends a product. I think those are the um, easiest for me to scale. I also just like that. And I also am now building brands with multiple personas so that if one person checks out, gets sick, doesn't want to do it anymore, you've got other Smart. people who are representatives of the brand. And I think in, in today's social environment, uh, people expect to talk to people on social, not not brands. Um, so like, hi, I, you know, if you look at Everlane, big old disrupting clothing company that sells on the internet, you know, all their Instagram is behind the scenes with the people who work at the company. Hey, I'm Jenna from Everlane. I'm a product manager. Here's what I do. Here's what's going on. Like, I think it's uh, just uh, by 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 description, you know, we are wanting to engage with other people online. And so if you don't have a face representing your brand or at least a couple of them, you're you're missing out on an opportunity. Totally. And again, if you're and only the, Amazon, you don't have, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, you're only on Amazon, then you don't need that. But if you're trying to go, you know, uh, social with it, which I think you should, then you probably want to have some level of persona at some point. Yeah. One of my favorite brands that's online right now is Chubby's. I think Chubby, Chubby's makes those stretchy shorts. I think every piece of clothing should have some stretch in it, first of all. So I think <laughs> there's a lot of opportunity in the stretchy clothing line of business. That's, I agree. You see, it. there's a lot of stretchy pants coming out now on the market. All these little Instagram brands. Hey, man, I got to jump here in a minute. Yeah. Uh, do we want to wrap up with anything? We do. We got three. We got two minutes left. I wanted to talk about ECML. I wanted, or, I wanted to talk about Affiliate World Europe and ECML. We're so excited that you're coming. I think it's going to be great. We're, like I said, we're going to be packing in at least 500 people there. Affiliate World's going to have like 3,000. It's going to be crazy. What are you, what are you excited to talk about at, 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 the, at these events? I think that Messenger is one of the biggest opportunities that we've seen in commerce uh, over the last five years. I think it's going to grow really big, and I think now is one of those times where like you can be an early adopter. Like you, person listening to this, have the opportunity to be an early adopter the way I was on Facebook and Pinterest, on Google, and you know a lot of these things because I was in there at the right time. I'm telling you, this is one of those. Um, and I'm excited to talk about that. I think that anytime you get a group of people of 3,000 or 500 together who are all going for the same thing you forget if you have not been there in a while you forget what that feels like how much motivation and inspiration how hyped up you are how um in uh you know enthused and 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 and, and like pumped Inspired, you are to go yeah. out and tackle your goals it, it, it really is a uh it's a winning strategy successful people go to live events it's just a description you and i know i've been saying that a lot it's just a description but like it is. You look at people who go to events, they're more successful than people who don't in most cases. It has been my experience, you know? Um, and I go to a lot of events. I'm excited about events. I think it's going to be a really good one. So, Nice. Let's Personally, as someone who puts on events, it, there's nothing – There's nothing. it's very difficult. They're very difficult to put on. They're very expensive. But there's nothing more rewarding than creating that energy in the room, creating that sensation, hearing the conversations happening during the happy hour and the mastermind dinner and everything. Like, 
I, I can't wait. Plus Barcelona, right? So it's going to hey, be man. fantastic. Nice. Uh, well, well, thanks Ezra, for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate yeah, you I, having me, and I'm excited about it. I appreciate it. Also, uh, we'll see you around. We'll see you in Barcelona, if not before. Bye. Bye.